perhaps the largest employer of illegal workers is the federal government. 13 investigates has discovered that millions of illegal immigrants are getting bigger tax refunds than you are. And it's all because of a massive tax loophole that costs billions and you're paying for it. Serious. It could change the whole complexion of an election. Two election supervisors take action tonight after an NBC2 investigation uncovers flawed record keeping and human error allowing people who are not citizens of the United States to vote. Milk. Bread. By the third week of the month, Maritza Nelson's $240 in food stamps has run out, leaving her $9 in cash and seven people to feed. So you run the food stamp in for a dollar and child support. That's what I got. Yet the 50-year-old single mother, who entered the U.S. by swimming across the Rio Grande, has government-funded housing, medication, and $700 a month in Social Security. She's been on assistance for 20 years and wants others to know that help is available. When you really, really need it, call look for help before it's too late. That message is heard in Florida, We're full Medicaid. where expert navigators now help clients apply online for multiple federal aid programs at the same time. And what's your marital status? The goal of the recruiters, who say they are privately funded, is to increase federal aid to Florida by $1 billion a year. There are people who have been here illegally for 50 years or 40 years. Am I then telling them to become guest workers? Yes. No, you can't do that. Why can't you do that? Because we're a Judeo-Christian principled nation. That's why you can't do that. Now, now I, you know, again, we just have a difference of opinion. A crisis unfolding on the southern border as thousands of illegal unaccompanied children are flowing into the United States. Republican Senator Jeff Sessions says the Obama administration is to blame for what you're seeing in these pictures. The Washington Times saying that Immigration and Customs Enforcement released 36,000 who were in the process of being deported, included among them 116 who had been already convicted of murder, thousands convicted for drunken driving, and others reportedly convicted of sex crimes. Why do you think they're doing this? I mean, do you think it's, I mean, do you think it's simply politics? Because I presume that nobody wants to put people who we think are, are criminals, who are violent criminals, back on the street. You would hope not. And, and what has happened, uh, here's what they did. Uh, they never called the police chief in my county. They never called me as a sheriff. And now hundreds, literally illegals, that a lot of them weren't even arrested in my county, but if in Metro Phoenix, they're incarcerated in prison in my county. And now they're releasing them, opening up the doors, and they're out on the streets. Now to this new report that's being called a, quote, large-scale abuse of authority by the administration. Nearly 68,000 illegal immigrants with criminal records have been released. Less than half of all felons that are in jail and are here illegally are removed from, are removed from this country. That means that we have sexual predators, kidnappers, murderers stalking the streets of our country. You can't stop us. There's too many of us. We're ready. We're, we're breeding by the day. You think we have kids because we like sex? No, we're having kids ready to start this war. Believe me. I got another one on the way. She'll be strapped up, ready for you. Come get it. Come get it. We will take up our shovels and our pickaxes and we break the land and make it landscaping and clean your toilets and our toilets. We will use them against you. Uh, it's also kind of witty the way uh, Rodriguez imagines immigrant day laborers using uh, the tools of their trade, of the gardening trade, like uh, weed whackers and, and uh, pruning devices as weapons. Orange paint uh, that was left by these vandals. Now, New Haven police responded to this, a report of vandalism earlier today. Uh, what's interesting is what these guys wrote, MS-13 and Kill Whites. MS-13, you may know, is a notorious international gang with roots in El Salvador. They are violent. They're involved in drug trafficking, human trafficking, and weapons trafficking, according to the feds. Police actually are looking into the possibility that the two men that are behind bars could be associated with the MS-13 gang. I also had an opportunity to speak to the victim's family, a couple of their family members, and they say they are just 
horrified by what has happened. Now, here is what happened. The 11-year-old was first approached at this intersection uh, where the two men approached her speaking in Spanish, but she ignored them and then walked away. Later in the evening, they snatched her from a nearby park and forced her into their apartment about five blocks away and sexually assaulted her. And police say that she was able to provide such an accurate description of these two men. That's how police were able to find them so quickly and arrest them and get them behind bars. Once again, they're looking into the possibility of this MS-13 connection. We're told that INS is also involved, checking into whether or not they're here legally. Well, it was road rage that led to a triple murder. And police say the suspect should have been deported years ago. Anthony Bologna and his two sons were gunned down on their way home from a family picnic. Minding their own business, not doing anything wrong, they were shot dead in their car on the streets of San Francisco after an argument ensued in an intersection between the, the men and a gang suspect. Cops say Edwin Ramos, shown here as the killer, a suspected MS-13 gang member, here illegally from El Salvador. Ramos had been convicted of two violent crimes as a juvenile, but he was never referred to the feds for deportation because San Francisco is a sanctuary city. Washington state is grappling with a crime spree and authorities say more than half of the state's most wanted criminals are suspected illegals, yet some cities like Seattle are dead set against Arizona's strong new immigration law. So what to do now? Tonight, the suspect in a deadly shooting in Manassas is behind bars. Police say he went on a shooting rampage that left three people dead. They also say he's an illegal immigrant who was supposed to be deported nine years ago. Martin Cudless had just celebrated his third birthday. The day he died, he rode his bike by himself for the first time. His father said he loved planes and Clifford the big red dog. He says he would have been starting school about now and wonders what he would have grown up to be. Martin was an only child and was having ice cream with his mother at this Baskin Robbins near Havana and Mississippi on September 4, 2008. A pickup truck crashed into the building and killed him. The two women in the pickup, Patricia Gunthar, and Deborah Sarecki were also killed. Police say they were hit by Francis Hernandez, a Guatemalan-born man who was here illegally. He didn't have a valid driver's license, used two different names, and had been arrested more than a dozen times before, yet managed to stay off immigration's radar. Two-year veteran of the force, Kevin Will, was killed early yesterday by a suspected drunk driver and illegal immigrant. Right off the top tonight, an alleged drunk driver smashes into a car full of nuns, killing one, critically injuring two others. Tonight we're learning more about why he should have never been behind the wheel to begin with. Good evening, I'm Brian Bolter. And I'm Sean Yancey. Police say that driver was no stranger to them. Carlos Montano had drive, driven drunk before and was on his way to being deported. On August 31st of last year, Alvarado was attempting to flee the flashing lights of a patrol car when he ran a red light at Balm Road and Airport Boulevard and struck 64-year-old Robert Ben's rental car. Ben had just landed at Austin Bergstrom for a business trip and was on his way to his hotel. He died instantly. It was the same day his youngest grandchild was born, and he never got to meet her. Alvarado's blood alcohol content was a .20. He had three prior DWI convictions. He was in the country illegally at the time of the accident and has been in jail with an immigration detainer ever since. We have more tough questions this afternoon about how this man was able to fool Gwinnett County officials into believing he was here legally. We first told you yesterday the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Department admits it made mistakes in the case of Ivan Gonzalez. He was here illegally, but he managed to trick the system and get out of jail twice, mm. the last time just days before he's accused of killing three children. Now, today we learned that another state agency may have also dropped the ball in this case. An illegal immigrant is in jail tonight for the kidnapping and sexual abuse of a 13-year-old girl who law enforcement says he knew. Investigators say it happened in Fayette County, but they also say four more victims are in neighboring Winnesheet County. The man in jail is 23-year-old Rodrigo Sandoval Estrada, a man who has been living in the town of Ashen with a fake identity. Two men are being held in the Travis County Jail tonight, arrested for the aggravated sexual assault of a child. And we want to warn you, the details of this story are graphic and might not be appropriate for younger viewers. Fox Events' Alex Villarreal joins us live in the studio with the latest. Alex? Loriana, the bond for the suspects is $30,000 each, plus an immigration detainer. 
Jim, an arrest warrant has been issued for Alberto Suarez. Investigators say he is the man who approached the victim who was sitting at that bus stop, grabbed her, dragged her all the way over here between the SEPTA truck and that building, and allegedly raped her. Police say Alberto Suarez is the man captured on surveillance video, pantless and running from 8th and Race after a brutal sexual assault. We know that he was in the city for a short period of time, uh, no more than a couple of months. Investigators say Suarez left his pants at the crime scene along with a wallet and a Mexican ID inside with the name Dario Lopez. But police soon learned it was a fake. Well, disturbing is right. Six men are now charged with first-degree rape for what allegedly happened in this home. We are told by even a veteran detective what the 30-year-old woman endured here was just horrific. As alleged, she was held against her will and raped by as many as eight different men. It's an absolute tragedy that uh, someone would be subjected to this kind of uh, abuse. I mean, it's just... It's uh, unbelievable that uh, someone could take advantage of a person in this manner. So far, these six men, ranging in age from 18 to 28, have been charged, but police say they are looking for more. This man, 37-year-old Guadalupe Gutierrez Suarez. Suarez is actually an illegal immigrant and is now behind bars in the Fremont County Jail on another rape charge. Since we broke this story exclusively yesterday, we've been checking with sources throughout the North Valley for more information. The criminal complaint against Gutierrez Suarez says the rape of the 10-year-old happened between November and January. As we told you last night, the girl gave birth at Madison Memorial this weekend, and both mother and child are doing well. K2 News has confirmed the two men accused of murdering a teenage girl in Milwaukee are in the United States illegally. They're going to accuse you of murder in the first degree, burglary in the first degree, assault and battery with a deadly weapon. 18-year-old Aaron Lacasalo made his first appearance before a judge on a closed circuit feed from the county jail. The courtroom was filled with family and friends of four-year-old Dakota Lane. Investigators say Lacasalo broke into the boy's home and stabbed him 36 times with a pair of scissors, then attacked his pregnant mother. She survived. <laughs> The following is just a horrible way to start off your newscast. A babysitter in Newton was supposed to be watching this two-year-old, but decided to leave him with her brother. This is the brother, Armando Martinez, an illegal immigrant now charged with felony child abuse for beating and killing the toddler. Well, the man charged with killing a Richland baby is back in Benton County. Jose Aguilar went in front of a judge this morning. Aguilar pleaded not guilty to manslaughter charges. He was assigned a public defender and is set for trial in August. The police say their investigation is ongoing. No word from the prosecutor on whether the charges could be upped or additional charges tacked on. Aguilar is a level one sex offender with a conviction in Kansas in the late 90s. This teenager now faces a count of first degree murder, accused in the death of a 93 year old woman. I still can't get the thought of seeing what happened yesterday, to watch your mom go in front of you and to know that the last thoughts that she might have had in her brain was of somebody beating her up. That's not how, that's not how you want her to go. Joe Three, as his mom called him, is haunted by the pain Luis Solomon suffered at the hands of her attacker. Investigators say 19-year-old Sergio Martinez Perez brutally beat her and sexually assaulted her. Well, John, police say this case is especially tragic because the victim, an 84-year-old woman, played the role of Good Samaritan to the man now charged with attacking her. Detectives say she gave Ricardo Tenorio Palma free furniture and a job before he allegedly slit her throat. Wednesday afternoon, Slidell police say an illegal alien slipped through the side door of his neighbor's home and attacked her with a razor blade, leaving an 8-inch slit across her throat. And there was just blood everywhere. She was bleeding. He, um, her neck was sliced open. And she said that the guy across the street did it. An Immokalee man has been charged with murder after a fight in a laundry room turns deadly. Collier Sheriff's investigators say Mauricio Escalante stabbed another man at least three times early on Saturday morning. Detectives say the violence followed an argument about speaking English instead of Spanish. Witnesses say Escalante went to his apartment to grab a weapon and then returned to confront the victim. That victim died later at the hospital. Immigration and Customs agents now say they are all over the case of Jose Reyes Alfaro. The illegal alien should have been deported back in 2002, but that did not happen. 
And reporter John Henrahan from our Fox affiliate WTTG has the story of the tragic results. Police in Manassas were responding to a bloodbath at this home in the very multicultural Georgetown South neighborhood just after 7.15 p.m. when they got a call to come to this house just under a half mile away where they found another murder victim and a severely injured woman. Friends and family saying their goodbyes today to a Pearland teen who police say was killed by a classmate. The funeral for 18-year-old Joshua Wilkerson started about an hour ago at Sagemont Church in southeast Houston. Wilkerson's beaded and burned body was discovered last week in a Pearland field. 19-year-old Hermio Morales is locked up, charged with Wilkerson's murder. Customs and immigration agents are looking into whether Morales is in the country illegally. AJC has always worked on the premise that as a minority, um, our security, our strength, our well-being in America is interdependent with those of other minorities. This is a Jewish issue. This is a Jewish issue.